Alright, I know if everybody can be able to hear me, those who are up tonight on the night shift. <sighs> okay. I'm going to hear Hello, everybody. Hope all is well. I know it's after midnight. I know it's like zero three hundred hours. I remember many times. This is first of all, my name is Reverend Doctor Antonio Arnold. How are you? I've been in ministry for twenty two over twenty two years. My online ministry is Church Without Walls, and Church Without Walls is in session tonight. To well after this morning zero three hundred. Okay. And I'm accustomed to this because when I was on active duty, there are times I'm up this late. So some habits are hard to break. I hope everybody can hear me well. I have my new headset on, which is also a microphone. And I hope you can hear me crystal clear what I'm about to do. We do a teaching uh, on a very interesting topic. A topic that many Christians have a hard time, matter of fact, fall on their faces when addressed. Especially when it comes to wrongdoing, unrighteousness, sin. They just fall on their face when adversaries try them or attack them. Because many Christian believers are not trained. They're not, they're, they may go to Sunday school they may go to a little Bible study, but they are not trained to be witnesses. If that makes sense. And if you look at our Christian history in the past, many Christians were trained to go out and share the message of Jesus Christ and the Father Jehovah. That's not happening as much today. And not by a long shot. Over 2 billion Christians plus uh, Protestants and free will. It's not going as much except for within the family. That's the only thing. Tell your children you need to go to church. You need to teach them first why they're attending worship and why it's so important to have a relationship with Jesus Christ or have a relationship with Jehovah. Or have a relationship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Should teach them that. Before they step foot in the branch of Zion. Early. Because a lot of saints, as we call Christians, are not equipped to deal with secular society. The world. I have gave a talking point for my book, and I'll tell you, this book right here will open a lot of eyes right here. We are living in the finished work of Christ, because it is finished. It is perfect. His perfection of his ministry, when he said, it is finished, amen, that's when you know perfection is done. Breaking the chain, the bondage of the traditions of the church, and don't forget, we are Hurricane Katrina and I, those are my three books. But I did extensive studies for years, which led to this book and which led to this one. Okay? These two, this is the first. This one here complement the first. So you get an opportunity to go to your bookstore, order your book online, or go to your bookstore and place an order. And just remember, we are living in the finished work of Christ by Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold and Sheila Arnold. Or breaking the chain of bondage of the tradition of the church by Reverend Dr. Antonio, Antonio Arnold uh, in that order. And to a little bit about myself, guys, I have been in ministry, and like I said, for 22 years. Preached the gospel, served as hospital chaplain, uh, prepared to become a chaplain. Ecclesiastic endorsed, if you understand what I'm talking about, those who are in the professional ministry. Uh, Ecclesiastes endorsed to become a chaplain. Yes, I have been. Uh, and I have proudly represented that uh, that branch. Uh, since 
seen a lot, done a lot. I'm also a disabled, disabled veteran. Recognized from DD-214 says 18 and a half, but the, the army, the military took off for a year and a half when they, when I returned after 9-11, which cheated me out of my 20 years. So that's going to be another story. But anyway, served in the Army military, Army and Air Force, Air National Guard, Army Reserve, been there, done that, been through a lot of specialized training, highly educated. Of course, you see my shirt, LU. Okay, also a Virginia State University alumni. I'm also alumni of St. Leo's University. I'm also alumni of Nash Community College, uh, the Community College of the Air Force. That's Al Ray said Virginia State University, uh, Frederick Al Ray Biblical Institute, Infantry Officer Basic Course. Which is a good profession. I took a lot of course in certification through the military. Uh, hmm. Cornell University, where I received my certification in blockchain essentials, uh, digital marketing, and artificial intelligence. I hope I haven't missed something. Oh, yeah, University of Phoenix, too. I'm an alumni there. Some college I didn't graduate from because I transferred to others, but I am an alumni. Once you're an alumni, you, you, you've been there. You're, you understand what an alumni is. You'll be there for life. But yep, it's time for the Word of God, turn for a teaching. And I'm here to tell you guys a lot of ministry has missed the mark, in my opinion. We have churches in every corner. But yet, we have more sin, more chaos in every corner throughout this nation, if not the world. This nation has gone from Christian driven to secular, worldly driven. Okay, I already gave a definition of worldly or world. It means a secular society. Read my book when you get an opportunity. It breaks it down, okay? What's now, what's considered an abomination or a sin is now okay. Marriage is no longer uh, uh, an institution of, between a man and a woman. It's now an institution it's thanks to the powers of be of the federal government, United States federal government, United Nation, which is the five to 12 dragons, uh, thanks to the European Union, especially um, Belgium, being led by Belgium, it's my opinion, but I know what I'm talking about, had brought in Satan and kicked out the Messiah. Prayer had been kicked out of school. We no longer pledge allegiance to the flag. We no longer teach our children in public school, which is owned and controlled by what? The federal government, Department of Education, which is controlled by the powers that be. And they're teaching our children that wrong is now right. Sin is now okay. Abomination and destruction of family is okay. You can call yourself dog, cat, women, male, boy, girl, it, whatever you like to call yourself and will be treated accordingly. And if you're not inclusive, you can be fired. You will be treated different like an outcast. And that's not inclusive itself. <laughs> that's any, exclusive. So we're kicking out Christianity. The United Nations, the United States of America, the European Union dealt them with the help of Belgium and Great Britain. It's kicked out Christianity. And now they're trying to force it on out Africa. Kush, Kush, the land of Kush. It's already widely accepted in Asia. And if you want money, if you want equipment, if you want infrastructure, if you want support from my, from a billionaire, trillion dollar nation, then you have to do what we say. 
You got to tell your boys you're now girls. You tell your girls you're now boys. And we're living in a dark age, in my opinion. We're living in a dark age. I'm getting ready to get to my point, though. We're living in such a dark age that we don't even know who Jesus is. Jesus is now the God of love. And that's it. That's where you stop at. That's where a lot of secular stop at. We can do anything we want without consequence or without judgment, without come without accountability without direction without uh, the righteousness of God in play without any form of direction it makes you wonder you know we talk about the scriptures well, man wrote the scriptures, the secular say. Well, isn't the word said that all, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God? Hmm? Doesn't the Bible teach us that all scriptures are, that, that the scriptures are given by the inspiration of God? Hmm? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 and it states very well, very well. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to turn to it for, for our secular sake. Because we need a teaching on this. Pastors, if you have it for your congregation, please start teaching back to the basics. Take them back to the basics of instructions. Take them to the letters of instructions to the church. Take them to the epistles. I'm taking to, to Second Timothy. All right, and we're going to three sixteen. All right, are we ready? I'm going to pull my Facebook page up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share this with you. And I'm going to get to my point. If your preacher's not, uh, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'll make sure you choose a pastor. Care, be carefully. Choose carefully when choosing a pastor. Okay. I want to encourage you. It's going to encourage you a, a great deal of you. Second Timothy 3.16. And it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. For the secularists, did y'all hear that? I want to make sure you understand that. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, may be what? Perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I'm going to go ahead and expound on that just a little bit, if I may. And there's just a teaching point. Today is a beautiful Sunday morning at 3.21 a.m. because I'm, All scriptures are given by inspiration. Yes, rightly, divinely inspired writing. Yes, a man was, has written God's word as God led him. Write this. And guess what they did? They wrote. How? By their own means? By their own logic? By their own knowledge? No, of course not. By inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of what? God. That should stop the conversation right there. If you run into our secularist or our hireling who doesn't teach the word. And it says what's probable for doctrine. Every ministry, church, organization should be Bible based only. All doctrine comes from where? The Bible. It comes from the scripture. 
So if you have a doctrine, it must be biblically directed. I don't care what side of the soil you stand on. It has to be what? Profitable for doctrine. Look up the word doctrine. It's guidance for you to righteousness. It's definitely the standard. Okay, it's the gold standard. All right? For reproof, for correction. What do we mean by reproof? What do we mean by correction? It is to correct you. It is to guide you to, to live a holy and set-apart life. You say you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and your Savior, his righteousness, and the word says, and this is the New Testament, all scriptures are given by inspiration. This scripture is very holy, just as important as any religious, more than just more than any book. Any Scientology book would not cannot measure up to this book. Okay? These books go this this the um this book called the Bible, the ghost called the bot called the Bible. It's a collection of books. Sixty-six books. There's more than that, of course, but there's sixty-six books. This one canonized. Sixty-six. Okay? Sixty-six. It's given by inspiration of God. Many of Americans or people who are call themselves Christians do not believe in what this scripture said. And many people who call themselves scriptures do not believe in being corrected. You don't judge me. You don't tell me what to do. And guess what the Christians do? They shut up. They shut up. We see unrighteousness, you see something wrong, you see the person heading in the wrong direction. We could talk about the right thing to do all day long. We could talk about that's deep, man. You guys tell them what's deep. You know, the blackness of deep. But we can't share scripture correction. You shouldn't do this. That's a sin. That's wrong. You don't judge me. And you shut up. And you have no training on how to address a person who is not saved or born again. No, oh, you don't judge me. You're not with that kind of thing. You're not. A, you're, your mind's not in Christ. And this is not a club. It's a way of life. This thing we call Christianity. It's very orthodox. It's not something you can put on today and take off tomorrow it is that real jesus is real hell is real the grave is real darkness is real separation from god is real is that real ladies and gentlemen and god's the jesus even made it a point early on his ministry that the kingdom of god is at hand did you know we all call to repent that's judgment. Don't judge me. That's what people get it wrong. And I'm, I'm beseeching all pastors and bishops and elders, as the Bible calls, to get it right. As a pastor, you're supposed to feed, you're supposed to be the shepherd, you're supposed to feed, as the scriptures say, feed the flock with knowledge and understanding. Okay? You're supposed to share truth with them. That's come from the Bible. Not from philosophers. Not from Scientology. Not do good. Oh, and if somebody said, well, I, we're not going to talk about abortion because they have a right. That's why churches are empty. Because nobody believes anymore. Why a lot of them fall into decay and falling apart and then the congregation is dying out. Nobody's witnessing. 
nobody going there for a two by two and witnessing the kingdom of God. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do mission work, as we call it today. For correction, it means exactly what it says. If you're a Christian, as a pastor, I can correct you. I don't care how old are you. As a bishop, I can correct you. If you're wrong, you're part of my flock, you're a Christian, it's my job to correct you. Pastor, we got a job to do. Elder, we got a job to do. Bishop, we got a job to do. I'm saying all this interchangeably because that's what it is. For instruction in righteousness, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. We're supposed to feed the flock in understanding and give them and what? Instruction. Doesn't the Apostle Paul was good about that? He, Jesus definitely was great about that. Instruction. We failed to give instructions in the body of Christ, and we wonder why the body, the the body of the body of the modern age Christian church, is falling apart. You go to Europe, especially uh, especially in uh, the Baltics, because I watched the documentary. Most of them churches are museums. That's it. A lot of folks in Eastern Europe are atheists. I'm telling you, man, the, the, the labor plentiful, but the, I mean, I mean, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. The United States, mostly atheists. I mean, I was on you on TikTok, and I was just appalled of what I have witnessed from young people and some old people. And from pastors, bishops, and apostles, call themselves apostles on a pulpit, what they're saying. You had to go to t My goodness. I'm giving y'all a warning to get it right, guys. Because God is not pleased. If we're not in his word, and we preach, preach some other doctrine, God is not going to be, it's going to smile on us on the day of judgment, it's coming. We're supposed to give instructions in righteousness. How are we supposed to judge righteously if we're not giving people are not giving instruction in righteousness and we're not studying the book of righteousness? We gotta study. We gotta research. You gotta understand what this is what thus says the Lord. How can we say that if we don't? And dwell ourselves into the Lamb Book of Life. How can we say anything? I mean, I was really appalled by the Pope, Popa, when he said, What am I to say? And then T.D. Jake said the same thing. What am I to say? So if you can't defend apologetically, yes, I am seminary graduated, I'm trained, I've definitely got over 20, 10 years worth of schooling. Trust me, very orthodox. I support the orthodox church. I support the Catholic church when they are doing righteousness. Yes, I, I support ministries that are doing righteousness, teaching from the scriptures. When you have leadership doing other things, they are no longer leaders. They are heathens. They can commit it blasphemy. The bird says for instruction and Righteousness. We better be right standing with God when we get on that pulpit or get on any platform, or especially social media. We better be in right standing before God and we better speak truth. I'm not here for political favors. I never got paid for political favors. I don't look at ministry as for a living. I'm very, I'm very bivocational. 
I'm very vocational because I have a job and I have a business. And I'm not interested in making a lot of money off of the poor. I am not interested in that. In some cases that I can understand, in some cases it makes no sense. But all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. Is given. It says it's given by inspiration of God for profit, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions of righteousness. You join the army, you have a drill instructor and a drill sergeant. Or an NCO giving you instruction and whatever they say goes. That's the same way it's possible to do this word. Like I said, I did 22 years and I worked for corporate America too. They have policies and procedures that guide you through for success. Same thing with the word of God. Ain't God no difference? This is not policies and procedures? Huh? Is it not policy and procedures? How to live righteously? It's right here in the book. I'm going to go ahead and get to my, now to get to my point. The title says about judges. And a lot of Christians run when it comes to righteousness. We got to the point now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters of Christ. Brothers and sisters of the Orthodox Church. Brothers and sisters of the Catholic Church. Brothers and sisters of all other nations. We Failed because we become afraid and we want to be accepted. Jesus never, his ministry never focused on about being accepted. He said that people are going to reject you. They're going to persecute you. He knew that. They did that to him. What do you think they're going to do to you? It's right there in the book. I'm not looking to be accepted. I expected to be rejected. Period. I'm not looking for a popularity contest in this branch of Zion or any branch of Zion. If you know what I know, you'd be on your knees asking for God for forgiveness right now because we have failed. We got men cross-dressing on every corner. There's a scripture for that. We got people lying in with opposite sex with the with same sex and, and the Bible dresses it too and we ignored it and he said and the devil said in them said shut your mouth don't you dare and guess what you Christians do see no evil hear no evil <laughs> can't say no correction see no correct can't see the can't correct the person because all scriptures are given by inspiration of God for profitable, for doctrine, and for correction, and for instruction. You can't do that on by the whole, the whole congregation, the church as an organization is rotten on the inside. Maybe a beautiful building and a lot of people smiling, but it's rotten on the inside. Why? Because they are, the organization has allowed satanic rituals satanic philosophies, satanic motivational speaking, satanic look at your neighbor instead of looking to God, a satanic look how much money you're going to give me, prosperity this and prosperity that. Let's, I'm a business owner. And I know what it means to have God want us to prosper and be in good health. I understand that. You earned it. But not off the backs of saints. These ministries, the only ones profiting is the, it's the bishop, pastor, apostle, and so whatever they call themselves. And prophet, they call these folk forth. You Americans are crazy. It's not an, as an ambassador to, to, to uh, Jesus Christ. Y'all crazy. Your whole theological thinking is wrong. I thank God I attended this university. And anybody attended Regent College, that's a good college too. But you know, I'm telling you, I don't know what the rest of y'all are doing with the theology. You're going to these good schools and you come back like totally messed up. Totally satanic. 
and satanic philosophies and instruction coming from these schools and universities and public schools. Satan has taken over the nation. And you're on that by and by, picking cotton, just as happy as a jaybird. Yes, sir, master. Time to stand up. It's time to be apologetic. Time to... All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. I want to share this also. Now, when it comes to judgment, to judge, that does not apply to pastors, elders, and bishops. Because we're supposed to have enough word in us and enough Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> judge righteously. And I'm going to have supporting scriptures to show you this too. You're supposed to judge righteously. Sometimes y'all don't, you get, you get these folks that give you, Satan knows the scriptures too. He'll give you a little bit and say that's how it is. Surely you wouldn't die. And you hold on to that. This is where a lot of Christians mess up. When they have secularists, devil worshipers, say this. Secularists, worldly people, politicians say this. Judge not. Didn't your Bible say judge not? That ye be not judged? It, and you, you are in captivity, under misunderstanding because of the lack of knowledge. Right today, that's going to tonight. That's going to change. This morning, going to change. I'm going to equip you, right now, to stand your ground. I'm going to equip you to go out there and speak boldly. I'm going to equip you right now. You don't take no mess from no satanic. But if they don't want to receive Jesus Christ as the Savior, and they don't see the Father who draws, and the Holy Spirit that seals, then you shake the dust off the fence, their, their feet and leave them alone. Don't even come among them. We're supposed to be set apart. We're not even supposed to be among them. Well, they, they, they'll receive great. No, they won't because they're going to fill your head with so much garbage that you're going to start becoming one of them. I know what I'm talking about. So, I'm on St. Matthew chapter 7. St. Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read for you from verse 1 through 5. Okay? Read the entire scriptures, my brothers and sisters. Do not fall for these false prophets and these, false, these, 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 these walker, workers of Satan. To beguile you means totally deceive. I'm going to put it right here to help you. And it's in red and Jesus talking. All right? Jesus is doing the teachings. All right? This is the Sermon on the Mount. And he said, Judge not that ye be not judged. For, I'm going to read, let me keep going. For with what judgment ye judge? <coughs> you shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, if shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? He's talking to these, uh, these folks who are, who are who, these, these, um, these Pharisees, talking about these Pharisees out there. And what well, how some of these hypocrites? And how, who how wilt thou say to thy brother? Would mean thy brother. Let me pull out the mote out of thy hand, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Do that first, and then shall thee say clearly to cast out the moat in thy brother's eye. In other words, you better get your house in order first, brothers and sisters. Get your priorities in order first. Get whatever demonic spirit that's in you out. Get focused on the word of truth first. Get your mind right with Jesus, right in Christ first. Because you can't help somebody who got a Big and yet something in their eye who's blind while you blind too. How 
can you help somebody when you're blind as well? How can you teach somebody when you're unlearned yourself? How can you tell Peach Air truth when you don't even know truth? Huh? How can you be a pastor when you're not taking your rightful place? Let me go back to it. Judge not that ye be judged. That means to judge carefully. Don't be a hypocrite. You got a beam in your eye. You talking about taking some, some, uh, uh, let me get right here. You want to pull out a moat, but you got a beam in your own eye. You want to take out a moat? out of somebody's eyes, and you can't even see what you're doing because you got this beam in your eye. It's better to take the beam out of your eyes first so I can see clearly now the rain is gone. You can see clearly now. And now that you can see clearly, now you can help that one get the moat out of their eye. So that means you got to get to study and you got to get some training. You can't go to a, you like this guy trying to cast out demon and he said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And he tore him up, tore his clothes off, tore him up to pieces. Why? Because he wasn't, first of all, he went and he wasn't thoroughly furnished. He didn't, he hadn't had the word of God in him. And we got people in position who went, who are not sent. And you got people who are not biblically qualified to be on that pulpit. Think about it. You got people who are do more of a motivational speaker. Who's, the, hey, look at your neighbor. Yeah, say yeah. And don't know about the scriptures. I'd rather take my trust on a Catholic priest who is living the word of God and or a priest who is an Orthodox priest who got over 2,000 years of, 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 of history. I'm talking about the office of priest. Then somebody who just got, got there don't know what they're doing. Who's not learned. I'm serious. We got to be about real business and souls on the line. Your soul too. We forgot about that. We don't even talk about saving souls anymore. Forget about asking somebody to save. Have you considered Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do, if you die today, do you know you're going to heaven and hell? I don't know. Every day is a struggle. Every day I'm working towards the perfect market, Christ. Do I make some mistakes? Sure. Do I fall short? Yeah. Do I keep pick myself up and keep going? Yes. And you're all right. Every day is a new day in the body of Christ. Every day. You can wake up and you want to reach down and shake somebody's hand and help them up. Or you want to ball up your fist and beat somebody inside the head. Which part of that body of Christ are you in? You notice there's no music, there's no burn, burn, no, there's none of that stuff to distract you. I'm teaching word on word, truth on truth. 2 Timothy 3.16 says it all. And Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5 says it all. Because what people fail to realize, I'm talking about this judge, because they don't want to be corrected. They don't want a seed planted in them that will still burn in their mind. A spirit of word of God that will burn in their mind. I'm go I gotta I gotta get my life right. I gotta make a change. They don't get that. Why? Because you ran like a coward. You want to be accepted. There's nothing in this word that says it's be you for you to be accepted. The only thing in this word. That this said, Jesus said, "Come unto me, all ye labor, and I will give you all ye labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. 
He always said, follow me. He didn't say, accept me. He said, follow me. Come unto me. Nothing more, nothing less. Ain't said none is all this other stuff that some of these pastors and bishops and apostles have said. And that's another topic right there. I'm out doubt because that's going to talk about the next topic I'll talk about later on. It's about false prophets. If you want to know about the false prophets, get your Bible, get to my book. Okay? Get your Bibles, get my book. But yeah. If you're not equipped to deal, go somewhere to get equipped. Now, next question. Can we judge righteously? I already gave you two clues already. The whole Bible speaks about judging. Judgment and judge. This whole book is not about a book of judgings and judging. Because when you have this Bible word inside of you, you can't help but to judge between right and wrong. It's just like you got to make a decision between Apples and oranges. Do I want an apple? Do I want an orange? Did I want? Did I want to, knowing that I can't handle alcohol, that I'm going to become a drunken fool and beat up my wife, or do I say I'm going to forego the alcohol? I'm going to get in this word of God. I'm going to get in front of this pastor who's going to teach me with knowledge and understanding, and I'm going to confess my sin. I'm going to commit it. My make a commitment to follow Jesus Christ and Him crucified alone. And you ask yourself, are you when you do that, are you asking yourself a question, am I justified? The Bible said you're justified by faith. Also, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, by hearing by the word of God. How can you hear? How can you hear? If nobody telling you nothing, how can you hear? If everybody doing what it is, how can you hear? Pastor, do you support abortion? And then you got pastors on the pulpit. Yeah, I support abortion. What right can you say? Get off the pulpit. You're fired. You're fired. Get off the pulpit. You're fired. Why? Well, because you are not living the word of God. The Bible teaches me that she judge righteousness. And I'm about to get on that subject right now. I'm about to share the scripture from Proverbs, all right? Proverbs. I mean, y'all wouldn't like me. Y'all not gonna like me. I know you won't. That's okay, I still love you. I love enough to tell you between right and wrong. I love you enough to, to beseech each and every one of you to live righteously. I love you enough to tell you when you are living in sin. I love you enough to just tell you like it is. And that's what a pastor is supposed to do. And that's for real. Let me do this real quick. Because uh, I'm going to share this, this passage of scripture. And once I share it to you, it's in you. It's in the blood is in your hands. You can you can run away from, but you can't run away from the Lord because the judgment is coming. Once that temple is rebuilt, once the prophecy, I mean the the not the the, the, the rivers. Anyway, I ain't gonna do that. Not yet. That'll be another topic. I want to, but I won't. Okay. Um. Proverbs 31, verse 9. And I want you to read the whole thing. And I put it in King James translation, because that's what I use, authorized version. Now I can use whatever version you want, but I'll stick to the authorized version. Let's see. And this piece right here is misspelling. And see, Satanists do not want you to hear this. Satanists do not want you to know this. Satanists 
do not want you to be free from this, from from sin and from you know op oppression. He he don't want you to be free at all. He don't want you to come to the knowledge of Christ. All right, we have Proverbs first uh, chapter thirty one verse. Verse 9, Proverbs, Book of Wisdom, it's King Solomon. It says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. And there's so much more, but I'm not going to bore you with that, because all scriptures are given by inspiration of God, for reproof, for correction, for instructions, for the man of God. And see, we screwed that up too. <laughs> All right. I gave you. Judge righteously. And if you read other scriptures, it talk about you judge righteously the whole time. Look at the word judge in, in, in your Bible. And you'll find a whole ton. You can see judgment and judge. This stuff that people telling your filling your head up saying judge not. It means Jesus is only telling us to judge wisely. Be judged carefully. And then, I don't, know, I don't know why pastors don't teach on judging. I don't know why pastors don't teach on revelations. Because that's being fulfilled as we speak. The big fall, uh, fall away if that's already occurred. The, uh, I forgot the name, but the Peace on River. I forgot the rivers. Are, I can't think of the rivers. I just didn't know it. But I, it's, not, it's not important. I still want I, want, I don't want to really let it go. The Euphrates River is dried up. All, and it dried up before, and that's how they got all these caves with all these artifacts that's in there because it dried up before. It dried up. So what does that mean? Let's go to, got to go to Revelation, got to go to Jeremiah, got to go to the Bible for that. Saints, it's time to repent and serve the true and living God that's in the Bible. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ain't got no cook -cook -cook cornbread, nothing. Ain't got, damn, got nothing to do with you. Look at your neighbor. Has nothing to do with saying yay. It has nothing to do with that. This is everything it has to do with, okay? And the lost false prophets will beguile you deceive you especially you women because you women are very vulnerable and they utilize you a lot i noticed that and many of you should be married we're living in a nation in time where marriage is no longer the institution marriage is no longer necessary in the united states and europe everybody wants to be single for the rest of their life but god has a place of order and God called us to be married. There's scriptures that support it. Not man on man. I'm talking about man and the woman. And I will continue to say this. This exclusive language. You want to see exclusive language? This is the biggest exclusive institution on the planet. And true Judaism too. It's very exclusive. All this is very exclusive. Not inclusive. Who made them inclusive? No, back in 1971, some people got together and said, we're going to change the language. They're going to get rid of Christianity. And they're working very good from the inside. Because guess what? They see, they, they're seated in the council. They are ordained ministers, pastors, and uh, they call themselves pastors, but they're not. You got motivational speakers who call themselves bishops. They're not pastors they're not bishop according to the scriptures you want to see their fruit look at their fruit look at listen to their sermons again and again and see if it falls in line and don't be bouncing around read the whole thing read the whole thing all scriptures are given by inspiration of god a true pastor is not your motivational speaker he's a Man of God that speaks the word. Whether the prophet on a man if he loses his own soul. It's a lot I'm about to find out. But what am I say? I'm not supposed to judge. 
We got to be real about God's words. And yes, I am no most not the charismatic pastor or preacher that you're looking for, but I am definitely am smart and I know what I'm talking about. God is not a God, Jehovah, it's not a God of games. His son definitely, who's going to rule this earth, is not a, a God of games. He sent his begotten son because he loved us and he wants us back in his realm. He wants to have that relationship, connection back with us. And he sent his only begotten son as a sacrificial lamb. Not as a man on a stallion riding a horse. Now, we got to get back to basic biblical teachings and living. If you want to be entertained, then you might as well stick to watching Hollywood. If you go to the church that's acting like Hollywood, it's not about the word of God, but leave. If you're a true saint of God, leave. Find a congregation that is truly word on word, orthodoxy, where are truly orthodoxy, original about this word. Get with them. Join that branch of Zion. Leave this modernistic stuff alone because it's going to destroy you spiritually. I love you enough to tell you that. Proverbs 31 and 9, you can read everything else before and after. I encourage that. But that's the point of judge. Okay, We're supposed to judge righteously. Jesus ordered us to judge righteously. Judge carefully as we do that. Make sure that we got our mind right first before we do that. Now, if I tell you, my young child and children, I'm correcting you. You're heading in the wrong direction. What are you going to say? Dad, shut up. Don't judge me to dad. Or you can say, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. Judge not to be judged. We got, our society is falling apart, guys. The society I grew up in is gone. It's dead. The society see, I'm seeing now is falling apart and it's dying faster than you can shake a stick. Why? Because we have turned away from the true God, true word. For creature comfort, convenience, and it's I like convenience. I love creature comfort. I do want to be warm in the winter time, but for the sake of greed, for the sake of acceptance, we turn from God and the false teaching on false love. This is love right here. This is the real love. Okay, you want to know about love? Here it is. You want to learn about fake love, like they get them big line love signs on the on the road next to schools? That's a God by itself, and that's a blasphemy. That's complete blasphemy. That is not the God of righteousness. That is not the love of right standing before God. That is my emotional God. How I feel. Colleges and universities are following that same pattern. And if we don't watch it in another five or ten years or maybe 50 years, this nation will be fully paganized. It's already paganized already. It's already paganized by our actions. And you know what? We even got statues of Satan that is acceptable. What used to be not condemned is now acceptable. Things should be condemned. We got laws on the book that condemn uh, theft, murder. But you can have all the laws in the books in the world. That means nothing's going to stop someone from committing crime. Especially when they don't have no fear of this. Don't fear this. If they don't fear this book, the word, the spirit of the word of God and his prophets, then you can write all the law and pass it and put them in warehouses and stacked high. And it's not going to change their mindset. Because possession of evil in the devil is humans. And humans are devils. Is the way they're thinking. It's on their thinking. All right? Their thinking is evil. That's what they become. 
straight point. If they're, if they're thinking it's right standing before God, then there are godly people. It's that simple. Why are we making it complicated? Why are we, why are we trying to convince? I don't try to convince nobody to follow Christ. I share what thus says the Lord. I say the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and confess your sins and accept and receive Jesus as your Savior. If they don't, if they throw rocks at me or they say, the heck with you. And a lot of pastors have been true pastors, have been beaten up. A lot of true pastors have been arrested, especially in Canada and in Europe, and especially in Great Britain. A lot of them for preaching the gospel of truth and repentance of sin to the LGBTQ community. What happened to the church community? What happened to the Christian community? Christian community did this. LGBTQ said, that's what they did. And it took over the federal guns. They're everywhere. They are in control. Fascism is now in charge. That's the fascism. Y'all looking for this? For that? New kind of fascism is this. And that's the thing what's happening. Romans chapter 1 says what it says. Leviticus, uh, Lamentation says what it says. Habakkuk says what it says. Deuteronomy said what it says. Leviticus definitely said what it says. But again, all scriptures are given by inspiration. Second Timothy says it all. 3.16 It's law. Without faith, it's, not, it's impossible to please God. Okay? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's where it's at. You have to have faith. You want to please the Lord? You got to you got to believe in this fully. You can't play with this. You can't play with this doctrine of Jesus Christ and his father Jehovah. No? You can't play with this thing. Is that real? You want to make understand it a little better? Get your book. You want to see my experience about this? Check it out. If you say I'm well, well you you tell them this. But why are you sharing your book? The same way you go to work every day. Every time you punch the clock, you're working for somebody. I decided to work for myself. And anyway, I share these books to help you. But anyway, guys, I love each and every one of you. Seriously, really do. That's why I do what I do. And I, I love to take people out, many people out of poverty. I'm doing some things. Things about to happen on Monday. Guys, check it out. Check me out. Ask questions. But the word of God is the word of God. Don't play with this thing. Pastors, like Apostle Paul hold. Sent those letters out to those pastors out there on Asia Minor. I'm putting you a verb, send you a verbal letter myself. Let's get it right. Get your priorities in order. Get things right. If you're doing doing this, look at your neighbor and this fashion of uh, motivation. Saints are going to still die and face darkness for the rest of the eternity because they have no foundation. Focus is the foundation of the scriptures. And you build from there. The word will empower us. Will inspire us. All scriptures given by inspiration. We're going to be inspired. Not by... No. Or doing this. Or doing this. That's not going to do it. Or this. Or doing the chicken walk. It's not going to do it, guys. And you're going to see it. You will see it. When the ground shakes and the earthquakes, and you see all sorts of manner flying through the air, which I foresee in age 12, dreams will dreams. Revelation is nothing to play with. I keep referring back to it. I don't know why God keeps messing with it. But anyway. I want you to see the word God as it is. Study. If you're unlearned, get learning. Get with a 
teacher, a master teacher. Go to seminary. Go to a seminary school that's truly, truly. I can say I recommend two universities, Liberty and Regent. They're the only two. I don't care how you feel about the president of the university or the founders. They're doing the job. They're out the way. You focus on getting your education. Get with those people who are sent by God to teach you what really does says the Lord. Not emotional quotient. Take that emotional quotient out the way. It's all about having credentials to show because even Apostle Paul had it. All the men of God had it. They had it in them. They have to get taught. Paul had to get taught after he having a revelation and knocked off his horse in Damascus. Well, how have I know that if I don't study? How do I know my history as a Baptist denomination side? How do I know my, the story of Pentecostalism? How do I know about modernism? How do I know about black theology? Theology. Protestant, Protestants. How do I know about the pre-protest movement? How do I know about the Anabaptists? Huh? And another hundred years from now, somebody's going to look up what Antonio Arnold talked about. Part of their learning. But well, we got to get right with God. Yes. There's a lot of stuff, here, uh, heresies in this, this country right now. And like I said, the Messiah is not pleased because it goes against this. Judge not to be judged. And you leave it at that. It said judge carefully. Greek Hebrew. Study the word of God for yourself. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Usually at this time I'd be up there doing something for digital marketing, but this is, I, God led me to say, like, you got to say something. Because I saw some of this stuff that's totally heresy. Heresy is so such an abomination, it's the highest level of abomination to me. Anyway, guys, this is Reverend Doctor. Let me pray, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight, this morning, in the wee early hours of the morning, to share some biblical truth. But I thus, thus the Lord have led me to believe and to share. Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this moment on to, to share on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I share, I thank you, Lord, to Father, for giving me an opportunity to, to have the knowledge and wisdom to share and have a, and know the balance between you know the focus on different things in my life. And making sure that no matter what I do, you are still the center. Even though I don't say, if I don't say it in front of men, but I say it with myself between you and me, that's all that matters. And Lord, Father, I ask that you continue to bless us indeed and enlarge our coasts from coast to coast, world to place to place around this planet, to reach and touch as many human people as possible. Lord, we ask for the rights of this nation, of the right standing for this nation to become righteous again. Lord, we hear about the nation becoming, let's make America great again. Let's make America righteous again. Lord, with your help, Lord, touch all the people of Christ who are called by your name, who have humbled themselves and prayed, have turned from their wicked ways. Lord, touch them in a mighty way, Lord. Help them, Lord, to make this nation righteous again. I know, Lord, I'm going to be persecuted. I know people are going to turn against me. I know people have already turned against me from the beginning when I didn't want to follow the footstep of unrighteousness. But Lord, Lord, I live, the Lord, I died. For Lord, you are my God. You are my Father. You are the Son, the, the Son of God, who you send your only begotten Son. I who you who you said, whom you are well pleased. Lord, we wait, wait for your our King to come. For thy will be done. And we thank you, Lord. Blessing to all those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Blessing to all those who are who, who wants to live the, in righteousness and be in right standing before you. Lord, we just don't want to be set apart. We don't want to be in darkness, Lord. But Lord, help us to make a good decision. Share our children to make good decision. Our walk to make the good decision. And Lord, we ask for pastors who are truly called by your name to tap up, be in place, and to lead this congregation 
to right standing before you and to get rid of these so-called these false prophets who are not about you who will have re their rewards for their for their deeds lord we know that the righteousness of god shall prevail over darkness for this we ask this in jesus name amen and with that guys with that prayer you all have a good night good day good morning it's 4 12 in the morning a.m i'm going to bed early <laughs> y'all have a good morning enjoy your worship service until next time my fellow brothers and sisters shalom and farewell god bless you and may heaven smile upon you amen